Episode 3. Mina's mouth hung open. What the hell are you doing here? Did you follow me? Leo's eyebrows narrowed momentarily, and then he pursed his lips, as if containing a laugh. A happy accident, I suspect. Mina wasn't buying that excuse for a minute. This was ridiculous. She refused to be charmed by Leo, especially now. With a nod toward the bottles in his hands, she said, You can't take those, and you need to leave, now. Wrapping her hand around his bicep, Mina dragged Leo up and away from the cellar, up the stairs, and out the back door. She hissed at him, You're going to get me fired. He wagged one of the bottles in front of her face. Sure you can't join me for a quick drink? We never get to have breakfast together. Mina scowled at him, her hands on her hips. He couldn't be serious. His lips cracked into a grin, and he was still extending the bottle of wine and gazing at her invitingly. Of course, the hottest guy she'd ever slept with would turn out to be some sort of stalker grifter. So this is like your thing? You just sneak into fancy places like this and the chalet and you steal things? Her voice rose in panic. What had she been thinking? Hooking up with a complete stranger? Leo's eyes laughed at her. I don't think of it as sneaking in exactly. Mina's blood boiled with irritation. Of course he didn't. I don't know how you found me here, but if you don't leave, I swear I'll call the police. She shoved him toward the door. And give me those, she added, reaching for the wine bottles. Leo handed them over easily, still smiling widely. Mina had no idea why he thought everything was so damn funny, but it was starting to get on her nerves. She put her palm against his back and gave him another shove out the door, closing it firmly behind him. Even with the door between them, Mina could still hear him laughing to himself outside the event center. Ugh. Mina slipped her phone from her uniform's pocket. Devin would love this new development. So, Leo may or may not be a stalker. SOS. What? Deets, like now. Did you make it to the catering gig? Catering gig is great. Thank you. But Leo showed up, caught him stealing from the wine cellar. No idea how he knew where to find me. Yikes, are you okay? I kicked him out and threatened to call the police. Don't worry. Mina marched back to the kitchen, wine bottles secure. She didn't have time to think about Leo and his burgeoning criminal empire. She had a job to do and she refused to get fired from this one. The front of the kitchen was still bustling, and Mina had trouble navigating through the mess to find Carl and give him the wine. The entire place smelled like roasting vegetables and warm, savory dishes that made her stomach grumble. She nearly stepped on a tall blonde guy's foot as she sidestepped a chef carrying a huge steaming pot. Oops, sorry, she said as she backed away, almost bumping into him again. He turned and his face lit accentuating brilliant green eyes. Mina? Mina almost choked. Killian? You're working here? His eyes were wide. Yep, the extra money's great. But what about you? How are you doing? Mina hated the look he gave her, like he pitied her. Still, it was sweet of him to worry. She suspected everyone else at the program was glad to be rid of more competition. She sighed. Killian smiled softly and Mina's heart skipped a beat. Everyone knows David's a real arsehole. We all think he was wrong for firing you like that. Mina bit her lip. Thanks, it sucks. I've never messed up like that in my entire life and it was at such an important time. Killian clapped a hand on her shoulder. Hey, you're still gonna make a great chef. And if you don't mind me saying so, I'm glad to see you're still in town. 
Mina blushed. Killian's hand hadn't moved and for a second she thought about moving closer and hugging him. He had given her his number. I'm glad too. So where are you staying? You didn't end up on the streets last night, did you? He wrinkled his nose and finally let his hand drop. Mina winced. Oh, you know, I found a last minute Airbnb. Staff weaved around the kitchen like worker bees swarming to pollen in spring. Everywhere Mina went, to the sink to rinse vegetables, to the freezer to grab ice, to a quieter corner to center herself, the arriving royal guests were all anyone talked about. Royalty and nobility started arriving nearly an hour before dinner was supposed to be served. According to the waiters flitting in and out of the kitchen, all of the guests were dripping in jewels. One of the earls was wearing a custom Valentino suit that reportedly cost him well over $10,000. Mina felt faint over the figure. She'd never spent over $100 on any one item of clothing. And that wasn't all. Apparently, the Duchess of Brinovia was wearing a dress stitched with so many rubies and other jewels that one of her maids had to walk behind her to make sure she didn't topple over. Mina tried to tune out the rest of the gossip and keep her focus on her work. She couldn't afford any more distractions. Not on her first night of work, and definitely not with the high-profile guests, considering that's what had gotten her in trouble at her last job. She was halfway through chopping a pineapple into bite-sized chunks. Carl busted into the room, announcing in a high-pitched voice, Joanne passed out in the hallway. She's sick or something. He stared around the room, waiting for someone to jump in and take action. Suddenly, Irene, the head chef, circled to where Mina stood cutting. She put her bony hand on Mina's back and pushed her toward the door. You've been great tonight. If our cook is ill, we need you tableside for a special meal. Go, go now. Mina blinked at Irene, but she only shooed her with her free hand. Carl clicked his tongue. Don't worry, new girl. It's only the Duchess and Duke of Brinovia. He leaned over to brush off a streak of flour dusting her uniform. Mina gulped. She wasn't supposed to be with the guests. She was supposed to be safely hidden in the kitchen, where there was less chance of her making an awful mistake. No, it was going to be fine. She didn't have a choice, so she just had to do her best. Mina raced to where the carts were kept. The table where the Duke and Duchess were seated was at the front of the luxurious dining hall. Her heart fluttered as she rolled her cart to the table and immediately identified the Duchess. She was seated at the head of the table, and her slender frame was draped in the glittering dress described by the staff. She looked to be in her early 50s, and even without her outrageous outfit, her gorgeous high cheekbones and stiff, elegant demeanor would have been a dead giveaway. An earl seated to the duchess's right addressed her grace before Mina could work up the nerve to stutter out a greeting. Has our young duke been up to his usual, still bringing home a new lady friend every other night? He gestured to an empty seat next to the duchess. Whoever this duke was apparently had some sort of reputation. The duchess sniffed at her glass. No, actually, I believe he's quite ready to date someone a little more up to his standards. At this, she shot a meaningful glance at the young lady seated across from her. The girl, presumably another member of the nobility, smirked into her salad fork. The duchess continued. I apologize for his tardiness. He should be along shortly. The Earl lifted his chin at an approaching guest as Mina sliced beef wellington, preparing each serving for the hot plate on the center of her cart. And speak of the devil, there's the young man we've all been waiting for. The young lady who'd shared a smile with the Duchess spoke, her voice honey sweet. Good to see you again, Your Grace. Hello all. Hello, Mum. Sorry I'm late. That accent. That voice, which had been whispering very dirty things in her ear that very morning, Mina knew it immediately. Her head snapped up, and her knife hand paused in midair. Oh, hell. It was Leo.